Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the Blacky Cool Podcast. I'm your host, Gershon. This is the podcast where we talk about what happens in TV, movie, anime news for the last week. Um, recording this on the 14th of Monday night. So we're going to talk about everything that happened in the past week. So without further ado, let's just dive in, guys. So Michelle Yeoh's character in Star Trek Discovery is confirmed to be getting a spinoff on the ABC All Access Star Trek I mean ABC All Access Network. Um, so that's currently in development. She will be getting a spinoff for her character, which is pretty interesting. I'm not the hugest Star Trek fan, but I watched a couple episodes. Looks interesting, going in a different direction. So that's always good. So and it's good for representation because she's oh this is bad. I don't know what race she is <laughs> i should have looked this up beforehand but it's good for representation to see um another race on tv in a starring role which is positive for people to feel welcome in this community but yeah she's getting a spinoff so that's going to be very interesting i'm not sure which way they're going to go how they're going to frame her character and whatnot. And are, is she going to be in a different dimension or whatever it's going to be. But apparently that's in the work. So look out for that. I'm pretty sure it's probably like a year away or something like that. Um, the Simpsons did a little clip. Like, you know what they do from their um, intro. They have that little run into the couch thing. They did Thanos where Thanos took... took uh, Maggie's sucker put it into his gauntlet and made them all disappear basically did the snap with them which is pretty funny it was funny he didn't snap away Maggie even though if he did it right he wouldn't well I guess half of them should have died and half of them should have lived but it was pretty funny cool little skit showing that Simpsons is still on top of everything pretty much um I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be their last season I think I think this is their last season they're gonna let the show die I mean, it had a, a heck of a run. Had some terrible years, had some great years, had some really great years. But then it, it's time for it to go. Like, Simpsons is a staple. We get it, but everything must come to an end. And I think it's time for Simpsons to end. <laughs> but it was a cool clip for a montage of their whole intro beginnings that they do with the couch, which is pretty cool. In other news... Stan Lee's final animated appearance or cameo is in Marvel's, um, I think it's Marvel's Avengers Black Panther's Quest. I watched like the first two episodes of this series and it was really good. If you're interested in seeing some reviews, check out my man at Nerd Soul. He's done reviews for almost every episode so far. So check him out. His link will be in the description. It's a good series. You definitely should check it out. Um, but he, Stan Lee's finding cameo, find an animated cameo. Cause I'm pretty sure he's gonna have a cameo in, oh, in game. So he might have a cameo in game and the Spider Man movie. I know he's gonna have a cameo in the Captain, um, Captain Marvel movie. But this is one of his last cameos, animated cameos. I feel like I said cameos a lot. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's sad, but good too, because it's something you always look forward to. But now that you know that's going to be his last one, it's really kind of, it sucks, but it's kind of like his final hurrah. And apparently his cameo in this, he gives a very... Um, deep thought moving speech to I believe to Black Panther I think I'm going to watch that episode just to watch that cameo and maybe even catch up with the whole series it's pretty good I'm not going to lie I like the cartoon even though I thought it was going to be a whole Black Panther cartoon but it's more of a Avengers meet Black Panther and then they go on a quest type of cartoon which is okay but I was looking for like a Black Panther show I would have liked that. That would have been really cool. But another TV news. I'm for, sorry. I forgot to tell you guys. We're in TV slash streaming news. Um, Black Panther and 
Black well, Black Panther won the um, Rotten Tomatoes have a, a award show. I guess I don't know if it's actually televised or not, but they have an award show, and Black Panther won the best wide release movie of 2018, and it also won the best comic book or graphic novel movie of 2018, which is really cool, seeing that it didn't win anything at the Golden Globes. It's cool to see it get some awards, even if it's the Rotten Tomatoes Award, even though I guess this is their 20th uh, award ceremony, so clearly they've been around for a while. I never heard of them. (laughs) Please hit me in the comments or hit me, um, oh yeah, just hit, let me know if you've heard of these awards because I've never heard of them at all. Not at all. <laughs> but also, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse won Best Animated Movie at the Rotten Tomato Award. So that's two awards for Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. It won the Golden Globe for Best Animated Movie. And it's won this Rotten Tomato Award for Best Animated Movie. So that's very good for Spider-Man. And it seems like it's doing a good job because it's getting people out to go see it. That's kind of movie news, but it was in TV section, so bear with me. Also, at that um, Rotten Tomato Awards, uh, Daredevil Season 3 got Best Reviewed Superhero Show of 2018. So even though this show has got canceled, it's still getting rewards. And I also seen somewhere that um, Charlie Cox is actually on board with the Save Dead, Save Daredevil petition. Like he's all game for it. So that's pretty cool. Um, I mean, let's be honest. I don't think the show's gonna get saved, but it's cool that he's showing his support to his fans. And showing that him he showing them that he sees them poor trust the words <laughs> but showing that he appreciates them standing behind him, which is pretty cool from all perspectives. For him being an actor, for him being on the show, for him being within this fan community, it's pretty cool to see. Um other news, um Dragon Prince had second season is supposed to be coming out February fifteenth. So, I'm not going to lie to you, I haven't seen the first season at all. I heard it was okay. It's from the creators of the Avatar, so I should be watching it. Avatar the movie with Aang and Last Anna Brinder, not Avatar the Blue People. Just wanted to clarify that. Um, Because I really love The Last Airbender. It was a great cartoon. Terrible movie, but great cartoon. (laughs) Um, So, Dragon Prince is supposed to be okay. I haven't heard, like, rave reviews for it but people are saying it's okay so maybe i'll get you around to checking it out but it's supposed to be on netflix february 15th so for all those people who have valentine's day plans get your girl mad at you now so you can watch the show (laughs) or just tell her you're gonna watch the show or for the ladies get your guys mad at you so you can watch the show (laughs) If you really like the show that much. And you can always make up for it. Like on, on the 17th. Make up for it. <laughs> but also Disney Plus. Uh, it looks like they're going to have a Lady Sif uh, TV series. So for all those people who are like. Where's Lady Sif been? Here you go. She's going to be on the Disney streaming service. She's going to have her own TV series it sounds like. I don't know what it's going to be about. Um, I don't think anybody was like, yeah, you know what I need? A Lady Sif TV show, because that's what I'm really missing in my life. (laughs) But they're giving her a show. I mean, Marvel has an abundance of characters to do many things with. And they chose Lady Sif, so hopefully they got something good going on with her. Because that's a weird pick out of all the people they could go with. But... That's what they're going with. And important, apparently, Loki series, um, Tom Hiddleston is not going to be doing what people think he's going to be doing or playing Loki the way they think he's going to be playing Loki in the series. There's been some rumblings that he might just be like a narrator or something like that. Or I might have read that wrong, but apparently he's not really going to be 
too much involved in the series necessarily, which sucks. But I was really interested to see how they were going to do that series anyway. And it looks like they haven't figured out a best way to do it. So they're going to do it halfway. <laughs> so, I mean, maybe that's good for Tom Hiddleston because that still brings him back into the movies. Because going to the Disney streaming service could be like a death sentence for you for not being in the movies anymore. Because we see how all the guys on Netflix look. Never got to break into the movie. So even though some of them I think they could have, it would have been real cool. Also, on the anime tip, I don't have a lot of anime news, just a little bit, because I wasn't paying attention to anime as much as I should be, but I'm going to get back on top of that. Send me some anime sites. Send me in the comments. Send me some anime sites. Um, but it looks like we're going to have another spinoff of the Naruto series, and this spinoff is going to focus on more on the OG characters, but as they got older. It's like, so older versions of Naruto, older versions of Sasuke, older versions of those guys. I'm going to follow them more. With Unlike the Baruto series, which follows all their kids necessarily, and you don't really get to see any of the OG characters. It looks like we're going to get that. And I think I read it's supposed to be coming sometime in May. The anime might start airing for like three weeks in May or February, if I remember that correctly. Yeah, so I'm a fan of Naruto. I have been slacking on it a little bit. I haven't really gotten into Baruto yet. I definitely need to check it out a little bit because a lot of things happen. I guess this this um, new um, spinoff is supposed to go come after the fourth war. Fourth, I can't say that word. <laughs> the fourth uh, Shinobi War. So that's when this one's supposed to seem to be kicking off, I guess. So um, I'm interested in it. I might check it out. I got a lot of Naruto to catch up. Naruto is so vast, and I hate filler episodes, and Naruto does that better than anyone. Well, not better than One Piece. One Piece kills you with fillers. But there's still good stuff in there, but oh, God, those fillers. But, yeah, so that looks like it's all we have for the TV and streaming news. So, um, without further ado, let's move over to movie news, guys. So, movie news, first things up. Oh, I'm very excited about this. Okay, Paramount is literally in the works of doing a reboot to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, if you know me, you know I'm a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fan. It's one of my favorite cartoons. Love Leonardo. Donatello's my second, but Leonardo is my dude. Uh, Love the Turtles. Watch the movie all the time the 1990 movie had it burned that tape out all but paramount is in the works of doing a reboot and it sounds like they're probably ready to start shooting at the end of this year that's my dogs barking don't mind them they're excited too they love turtles too (laughs) but yeah paramount is probably going to be starting shooting turtles at the end of this year i don't think they have a cash yet or a director yet still in the final steps of that but that's really good to hear because I don't want this series to die from what Michael Bay did. I'm not going to lie. I like some of the things in the last Turtle movies. The Turtles did look weird and monstrous, even though they changed them twice. But we got Bebop and Rocksteady in there. And we got we got some form of crane. We didn't get a whole crane. But we got a nice kind of crane in the movies. Live action. That was crazy. But yeah, it looks like they're going to be rebooting the Turtles and start from scratch. They haven't given you much to go on besides the reboot, so I'm getting away from everything that Michael Bay did. And if you hear that, that's my thermos, um, my heater kicking on, so it's going to be loud. Hopefully I can edit that out. Um, (laughs) Yeah, so that's going to be interesting. Very excited for that. Probably won't be out for a year and a half. Probably won't be maybe like six months before we see what the Turtles might actually look like. So, I'm excited though. Oh, I'm excited. In other news, it looks like Pinocchio has lost another director. (laughs) Uh, I think that's two directors so far for the Pinocchio live action movie that Disney's trying to put out. 
And so far, I think this is the this has been the hardest one for them to get um, going out of their all their live action adaptations of their um, cartoon movies, which sucks. So they're back on the search for another director for Pol- Pinocchio. I don't, and I'm not even sure if um, Tom Hanks is is still going to play. J- Pedo. I haven't seen anything saying that he is or not. I just know they were talking to him to play Geppetto. So they might even lose him if they don't get a good director soon enough. So that kind of sucks for that movie. Um, other news, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. The sequel is rumored to have a time jump. So it seems like in the sequel, they're going to jump maybe two or three years Make Miles a little older, a little more, um, what's the word, experience is playing Spider-Man, or being Spider-Man, I mean, um, and I don't know if, I, I don't know how I feel about that, I kind of want them to start right from where they left off, um, him still being inexperienced, and us really starting to fall in love with him more as he learns the ropes of being Spider-Man on his own. We, we've seen him become Spider-Man in this universe with other Spider-Man kind of helping him along. But now we can see him grow as a Spider-Man on his own before they get back into the whole Spider-Verse stuff, which would be cool. I would think like part of the movie, him just relearning how to be Spider-Man without other Spider-Man around would be very interesting, at least in my opinion. Um, but... They clearly feel differently because they want to do a time jump, and which could always go bad for you. Time jumps can always mess up things. Just look at Young Justice when they did their time jump. It was it worked. They did an okay job. It worked. Um, I'm talking about season from season one to season two. It worked, but it could have been horrible. It could have went very bad. It could have been very bad. But, yeah, that's what they're planning to do. And I think they're getting, um, I don't know who's going to write. I don't know if the, um, the two guys, Chris and um, Phil, is it Lord? I think it's Lord Miller. I don't know if they're going to write this one or direct it again. I haven't seen anything about that. But if they're on, I'm on. If they're back, I, I got full faith in these guys. They did an awesome job. Also, speaking of sequels, Venom sequel is already ready to go. Looks like they're going to get the same cast, same writing team to write the sequel to Venom. Um, I've seen that they might be bringing Woody Harrelson in, and they're really going to do this carnage. Really, is going to be a... The, I don't know if he's going to be a main villain, but I'm trying not to read too much of it. Even though Venom is not a movie that I'm really worried about spoiling. Because <laughs> I thought the first Venom was okay. I don't think it was as good as people say it is. I think they did a good job making Venom, Venom without Spider-Man. But it's still... It's, CGI is terrible. But this is not a review. But it looks like that sequel is going for... Which... Come on, we know that sequel is going for it because it made a buttload of money. And they're not going to leave money on the table after that. No, they're just not going to do that. So, it looks like Sony is really going deep into Spider-Man now. They're in the Spider-Man business because it's working for them. And I I can't blame them. Um, Amy Pascal's doing an awesome job with Spider-Man. She's doing her thing there. Um... Feige's probably not as happy because <laughs> I know he would like to have Spider-Man all to himself, but Spider-Man, you guys are raising his profile now. It's, it's going to be hard to get him back from Sony. I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. <laughs> but also, oh, I'm this is this is this is not really comic book news. Um, this is just something I think I want I want to promote out there, let people know about. So there's a movie called Little. Um, it's starring Regina King, I'm going to pronounce her name wrong, Marsha Martin, and who else is in this? Issa Rae. 
that's who else is Issa Rae. So they're in this movie called Littles. It's basically basically um one of those body switch movies, but for I don't want to say for black people, but I think this is the first um black body switch movie I remember seeing in the last couple years. There might have been one back in the day. But I haven't seen one in a long time, which is really cool. The whole trope of this, the whole Freaky Friday trope, our whole um, adult becomes girl. I mean, adult becomes child, like big and everything. So it's basically a big version, but for black people. And I know that sounds bad, but the, the trailer looks awesome. Check out the trailer. It's hilarious. Also on top of that. Oh, I wish I knew her name, know how to pronounce her name right. I'm very, I'm messing up her name. But the girl from Blackish, Mercer Martin, she's a producer on this movie, and she's the youngest person to be a producer on a movie. And I think that's just a awesome accomplishment on her part. And congratulations to her. And I'm gonna go check it out because it looked funny. <laughs> the trailer looked funny. So go ahead, check out the trailer. Hit me in the comments. Let me know what you think. Or hit me on Twitter. Let me know what you think. And congrats to her for making being the first producer at her age. Congrats to her. Okay, let's get back to geek stuff. <laughs> um, oh, there's rumors that Warner Brothers are in the works of making an animated Mortal Kombat movie <laughs> on the edge of this the new Mortal Kombat game coming out this would be a good time to kind of its profiles kind of raised so it'd be a good time to be working on that Warner Brothers is this I, I think I don't know if they're going to do it or if they're just in the development stage right now but they're talking about making a Mortal Kombat animated movie which would be good because you could get a I don't know wait would you go for a harder rating with that? Because we want to see blood in a Mortal Kombat movie. That's the only thing about the live action ones. I don't think it was enough blood. But they were trying to, you know, be able to play to everybody. But if they do this, I would like to see more blood in me myself. Um, it's Mortal Kombat. It's one of the bloodiest games out there. Like, when it first came out, mothers were just against it. Terribly against it. Oh, those are the good old days. But, yeah, they're... Talking about making a Mortal Kombat animated movie. And I think animation is the way to go with Mortal Kombat. I think that would be a better way to go with Mortal Kombat. The live action movies have their time and are terrible and campy and terrible. <laughs> but they were there and they were fun for that time. I think now with the new generation and with the new games and what you can... All the new characters they add into these games, Leatherface, Freddy Cougar, Jason, I think that would really be cool animated. They would have to try to get the rights to those characters to be able to put them in the animated movie, but I think that would be really cool to do. I'm, I'm kind of actually excited for this idea. Depending on how they do it, I'm on board. I am really on board with it. In other news, they're... Oh, this is some anime news. I found this part. Okay, Mobile Suit Gundam NT, which I don't know what that one is. <laughs> but apparently it's coming to the U.S. to theaters for one night. Um, So there's going to be a one-time showing just like the Dragon Ball did. Um, Dragon Ball, what was it? The one where Frieza came back and was gold. I didn't watch it. I should I should definitely check that out. I'm slacking on my anime. Oh, I got to get on my anime. But yeah, Mobile Suit Gundam, which I'm a fan of Mobile Suit Gundam, the old school ones, not the super old school, but like Mobile Suit Gundam Wing, I love Wing, and Final Waltz, oh, those are my, those are mine, I love those, but they're supposed to be having a one night showing, and I'm pretty sure Funimation or Crunchyroll would uh, hit us up with more information when that comes out, and when it gets close to the time. But yeah, they're going to do that one night showing thing and try to, you know, get the West bigger on, anim on anime and have it be more popular here instead of just kind of underground. 
I know they're still working on a lot of. I mean, we have those Netflix adaptations of animes that are just horrible, like the um, Death Note one. I didn't watch the Bleach one. I heard that wasn't so bad. And then the Ghost in the Shell, we all know that was (coughs) weirdly racist, but also a beautiful adaptation. I don't understand it. How'd you get everything so right, but then everything's so wrong? (laughs) Oh, Hollywood. (laughs) But yeah, so that's coming to a theater sometime. I'm I'm assuming it's this year. I can't see it being next year. That just makes no sense. Also, Captain Marvel went. Um, I think they had their pre sales on the seventh, and they're looking good. That first day, it really surprised people. They did really good in pre sales, so that. It's going to be a good kind of headline going into the movie throughout this next, I think, oh, it comes out real soon. Yeah, it comes out in like a month and a half. So, yeah, that's going to be a good headline for them to pop out there, saying that their pre-sales did really well and all that. So, I mean, and then I I know they had a couple new TV spots that look really good. Um, Also, I saw... This is not this is not comic book related, but I like Jordan Peele, so I lo- I saw Jordan Peele's uh, Us trailer, creepy, so creepy, oh my god, so creepy, and I'm not even a horror fan, so it's gonna be really hard for me to go see this one, cause this one looks like it's more horror than suspense, like his last one was, but I have a theory. Check this out. This is my theory on this. I think this is. Uh, with the whole doppelgangers and twins, I think it's more about how black people hold down other black people. I think that might be the message within this. Hit me in the comments. Let me know what you think the message is. Somebody said that, uh, uh, I don't know the dude's name, so I can't give him credit for it, but I'm going to say it anyway. He said he thinks the people who are all dismembered are the original people and the people... Um, that they came to get are clones <laughs> and they escaped and trying to take those guys back, which is a really cool theory, but it's kind of out there, but it's a cool theory. Hit me in the comments. Let me know what you got, what theories you have. Hit me on Twitter on Black E. Cool. If you have theories of what Jordan Peele might be trying to say with this movie, even though it's super early, be trying to throw out theories, but Hey, that's what the world works. You throw out theories. <laughs> But back to comic news. Um, uh, Aquaman did it. It made it to a billion dollars. Never did I think I would say Aquaman is a billion dollar movie. But here we are in 2019. Justice League, not a billion dollar movie. Wonder Woman, not a billion dollar movie. Superman, not a billion dollar movie. But Aquaman, a billion dollar movie. So DC has a step, a foot to step on now. Like they, they're still in the game after trying to get them, trying, terribly trying to get themselves out of the game with their movies. They're in the game now. Hopefully they take this and run with it. Um, DC really needs to hire James Wong to be their Feige. They really do. <laughs> At this point. This man shows you he can take the one superhero you didn't think would make money and made a billion dollars with him. You need to hire this man to to run your DC universe or DC movie verse or whatever you're calling it. Call it something, DC. Give us a title this. Marvel understood branding. Come on. Get on top of that. But yes, Aquaman made a billion dollars. Unfortunately... He got kicked out of the number one spot by, what was the movie? The Inside, which is a remake of a movie called The Untouchable. Um, it's the Inside is starred Kevin Hart and Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart. <laughs> oh, Kevin Hart. He's in a lot of trouble. But I think, I, I'm not going to get my opinions on that. It stars Kevin Hart and... Oh, I forgot Brian Cranston, which I like Brian Cranston because I love Malcolm in the Middle. Holler at me if you watch Malcolm in the Middle. 
It's on Netflix, so watch it. Um, yes, it's a remake of a French movie, which is one of the three highest, um, most successful French movies, I guess, in history. Don't quote me on that. I might have read that somewhere. I might have misread it somewhere. But yeah, that took the number one spot when Aquaman crossed the billion dollar mark. So unfortunately, Aquaman didn't get that number one and billion dollar spot, which kind of sucks. But it still made a billion dollars so they can go home and be happy with that. And that is all in the news. I probably missed some things. Probably didn't talk about some things you guys wanted to talk about. So hit me in the comments. Hit me on Twitter. Let me know. Um, for next week, if you got something you guys want to talk about, want me to talk about, want to bring up and hear my opinions about it, let me know. Also, appreciate you guys listening. Appreciate you guys checking out the channel. Also, I am on Anchor now. Yep, I got the podcast on Anchor, which is also on uh, Podcast Pocket and also on, I forget the name of it. I'll put it in the comments. I think it's... Stitcher. I'm on Stitcher as well. So you can take this podcast with you anywhere now. Um, check it out there if you have time. Um, add me over there on Stitcher, Anchor, and Podcast Pocket. Um, send me some questions if you would like me to do questions on this podcast. I'm up for anything. Also, I want to give a shout out to a couple friends that have been supporting the podcast and the channel. To my friend Faust. Appreciate you watching and listening. Um, I did see the Godzilla trailer, and it looks interesting. <laughs> I'm not super geek, but it looks interesting. So we'll probably go check it out when it comes out. Also, want to give a thanks to my friend the Rabbit, who told me to do a podcast. Appreciate you, man. All the help you always giving me. It's very much appreciated. And appreciate all the people listening right now. So check me out at Blackie Cool on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And of course here on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed. Uh I I think there's something on um Anchor if you want to support what I'm doing here. If you like it, you could drop a buck in or something like that. Also, I got like affiliate links in my description. Hit those up if you want to support me. I get a little money if you buy something on Amazon at no cost to you. Um, yeah, thanks for listening, guys, and I'll talk to you in my next one.